Of course, Greta met with Zelensky. Notes from the Edge of the Narrative Matrix. Foreign conflicts in the 2020s are always like, USA, let's militarily encircle this large nation. Large nation. Hey, stop. USA, let's heavily arm proxy forces right on their border. Large nation, we're drawing a red line. USA, let's cross the red line immediately. Large nation. Acts. USA, oh my god, completely unprovoked aggression. Of course, Greta Thunberg met with Zelensky. Of course she did. That was the only box left to check off in the most PR-intensive proxy war of all time. They got Bono. They got Mark Hamill and Sean Penn. They got appearances at the WEF, the New York Stock Exchange, and the Grammys. They just needed Greta. As with 2016 and 2020, by far the largest U.S. election interference in 2024 will come not from Russia or China, but from American oligarchs and empire managers. This is treated as fine and normal because American oligarchs and empire managers are the nation's real government. U.S. election interference is an inside job. We've been seeing this illustrated with RFK Jr.'s censorship by Google-owned YouTube. Here's a tweet by Robert F. Kennedy Jr. YouTube just pulled another of my videos with former New York Post reporter Al Gwart. People made a big deal about Russia supposedly manipulating internet information to influence a presidential election. Shouldn't we be worried when tech giant corporations do the same? We also saw it illustrated recently when Obama's acting CIA director just casually admitted to using his intelligence connections to orchestrate a blatant psyop to manipulate the 2020 election using false information, and literally nothing happened. It was just accepted as fine and normal. It's only illegitimate election interference if unauthorized foreign powers do it or if ordinary Americans do it. When U.S. oligarchs and empire managers do it, it's just the normal thing that's supposed to happen. A 2014 study found that Americans have no idea how bad income inequality in their country really is. Participants believed things are vastly more equal than they are. This is because Western media never report on the class warfare that is being waged against the working class. The media are owned and controlled by extremely wealthy people who have a vested interest in keeping everyone from looking at class warfare and the most influential media employees share this interest because their empire apologia has made them rich as well. That's why they keep everyone focused on culture wars, irrelevant partisan spats, and other vapid nonsense. The U.S. empire is like the mind of a highly dysfunctional person. There might be parts of it that sometimes say, I shouldn't be like this, I should change but the way it's wired points it toward destructive behavior. There are significant parts of the empire who are acutely aware that things like military overextension and ramping up aggressions against China run directly against its own interests. But because the forces which pilot the empire's actions are pointed in that direction, it's happening anyway. The empire keeps waging destruction the way an addict keeps using. The reason you seldom see people change despite their stated intent to do so is because your behavior doesn't change just because you know it should. It changes when you fix the underlying forces within yourself which drive that behavior. It's the same with the U.S. Empire. The U.S. Empire is inseparable from the forces of neoliberal capitalism, war profiteering, and unipolarism with which its true leadership has intertwined itself. So while the odd empire manager may say, end the wars, it never happens, because everything in it is oriented toward war. This is the same reason we keep destroying our biosphere, despite being acutely aware that we need it to survive. Every system we've set up to drive human behavior and organize human civilization is pointed toward ecocide, despite all the science saying that's a bad thing to do. I know a lot of people are worried about neural implants turning the public into mindless servants of the powerful. But if it makes you feel any better, the powerful have already achieved that with propaganda anyway. An unhealthy relationship with mental narrative pervades every level of human suffering, from the individual to humanity as a whole. 
Individual suffering and dysfunction arises from believed mental narratives about who and what we are, eclipsing our awareness of our boundless and indivisible true nature. And humanity's collective suffering and dysfunction arises from believed propaganda narratives about our nations, our governments, our society, and our world. Just as it's possible for the human organism to shed its unwholesome relationship with mental narrative in the transformation commonly known as spiritual enlightenment, it's possible for the human species to shed its unwholesome relationship with mental narrative as a collective. Only then will we achieve maturity with these recently evolved large brains of ours and become truly capable of happiness, harmoniousness, and health.